Welcome guys, first episode of On Point with Ryan. This is when we're going to talk about some of the simple stuff, some of the old stuff, and keep us focused on sexual strategy and not wondering about who's wearing the latest red hat or who did what. So, if you guys don't know, back when this base kind of was still a thing and didn't have a name yet, there was three guys in there. They both had, or they all had R's in their names. There was Roycey, there was Rolo, and there was Roosh. In this case, we're going to talk about Chateau Hartiste, also known as Roycey. He was the practical game guide to Rolo Tomasi's overarching 10,000 foot strategy. And here in the first post we have of his that's available is Endless Dating. Now, the point he makes, how long is too long to stay in the dating game? The primary reason for their psychological unease and emotional instability of so many modern women and to a different extent modern men resides in the irresolvable tension between our ancient biological inheritance and relatively recent emergence of the high-tech rootless world of unparalleled mate choice that we now inhabit. So what is he talking about here? Simply put, the modern sexual marketplace, the dating world, is not some failure on morals or political choices. It's really a technological change. And in this case, a big one is that we're in larger and larger groups of people, which create more anonymity, as well as chemical ones. For example, the pill, um, abortions, all that sort of stuff. So what does that mean? In this case, he says here, it would shock most people if they were transported back in time when humans lived in small tribes to see young girls having babies at 14 and again in 14 years and nine and a half months. The substance cultures believe this way today. The bulk of our prehistory was spent in conditions like this, so no matter what our brains are having trouble coping with, a radically different environment where childbirth is routinely put off till mid-30s, if at all, and rejection by a woman no longer means banishment to the icy wastelands, celibate metadeath where a man needs merely walk to the other side, of a bar to go try again. Again, it used to be the case when you were in groups of small towns, maybe 200 people, everybody knew everybody. And if you hit on a girl, you shot down, you didn't do so hot. She basically went to all the other girls and said, this guy's a creep, not dealing with them. Your sexual options were over. You got stuck with Bertha, the ugly one in the town that nobody else wanted. And if you were lucky, you had some flipper babies. If you weren't so lucky, you never really made it out of your 30s alive. Now we're in the situation where we're in a city of 4 million people, 5 million people, in some cases, 10 million people. It's gone from an iterative sort of prisoner's dilemma into a non-iterative one. Now, if you guys don't know what that means, map it here. The idea of a prisoner's dilemma is where you can have two people. One maximizes their own selfishness at the expense of the other, or the one can cooperate with the other person and get less of a benefit. The idea is you don't know what the other person is going to pick. So while individually it maximizes selfishness, if the other party decides to screw you over and you decide to play fair, you get screwed. If you decide to screw them over and you decide and they decide to screw you over, you both get screwed. In this case, we're kind of that way sexually. The man who's selfish rises to the top. And again, one consequence of this new paradigm, as he puts it, the absurd number of years spent in the dating circuit. Women designed by nature to be in the next generation no older than 25. The r medical risks that go up each year afterwards, exponentially so after 35. So her body begins to wear down, etc., etc. You guys know the whole spiel there. Women, when they get older, obviously become less youthful. And that's the kind of the prime driver of what men are attracted to in women. He refers to it as an embittering realization, which is kind of funny. Rollo has, a, or Roycey, sorry, has a very... I don't know, jaded look at the sexual marketplace. But at the time, don't forget, he was Roycey in DC. And from what I understand, a lot of the old school guys like Jack Murphy, um, him, Roosh, DC was one of the worst places to run pickup. The only one that I can think of that was worse was Toronto. They called this the place that pickup went to die. And so, yeah, he obviously began to get more of a jaded outlook on this stuff. But the point is still good. Again, men too have a hard time adjusting out of the new system. Anthropologically speaking, it wasn't so long ago that a man or his kin blew his entire wad of hard-earned social and material capital wooing one or two women over the course of a natural lifespan. In pre-birth control, age the first deflowering blast meant conception, followed by years of fatherhood when there were limits on just how many sexual partners the man could accumulate in a lifetime. The rigorous experience of winning over and keeping the best quality woman he could afford and then providing for the kids soon thereafter meant that serial dating was not a typical feature of life. Again, Dating 40 or 50 women in a year and jumping haphazardly in and out of three-month relationships is particularly 
a modern life for which men are not optimized. And this is the part where game becomes so important. Like he said, throughout all of human history, we're kind of designed for go after one. And if you're lucky, you can get the one. There's also the cases of uh, the top tier men being able to have a multitude of women while the ones in the bottom getting nothing. We're in a situation now where it's basically a free for all. And he ends it off with, I do not think the current reality or endless dating can last. Something must give. Either humans will evolve into different animals, socially able to withstand decades of, de of hookups and fragmentary relationships without turning to the comforts of cats and internet porn, or those people who seriously de date and delay childbirth will not have enough kids and natural selection will remove them from the gene pool as a failed experiment. Either way, change is in the air. A couple points on this. Realize that that is going to happen, but way too late for us to enjoy it. Best thing you can do instead of trying to save the world as it was is just adapt to the way it is right now and not worry about what it's going to be in the future. As it stands now, you can actually have multiple relationships and try to find one that works out for your best interests. In his case, you need to psychologically prepare yourself for 40 or 50 women in a lifetime here. And if you're not that guy, somebody else is. And just realize a lot more women than what used to be around don't have to marry you. They don't have to stick around with you long term. And so it puts the onus on us instead of a biological necessity, meaning basically we need a family because you want kids and she wants to not starve to death. Now we're in the case where girls make their own money and you don't need to keep one around to have another one enjoy it. So anyways, take it for what it's worth. Again, the seminal post of Roy C. Chateau Artiste. I'll be doing a lot more of these things. So I'll see you on the next one. So I had to take an extra minute here and take a look through the comments of these things because I'm going to show you exactly what it is we're trying to avoid and why I call this stuff on point. So the first one, Royce kind of talks about, yeah, sex selective abortions and likely male fetuses spontaneously aborting. Why? It's all random nonsense, but just realize you don't want to look into it too heavy. You don't want to be like Dave down here. One simulacrum, two simulacra. If you're the guy who actually knows what that means, then I guarantee you no girl's touching you. Something to think about anyway. Again, a lot of guys are just going to complain. Complain if you want to. Just try to keep it offline because nobody wants to hear it and it's not going to make you attractive. And all that complaining does is it makes you more likely to be the guy who has a reason to complain. If you don't believe me, look up the MRAs from the 1970s and see how successful they are now. I'll leave it at that. Um, finally, I figured you guys would get a nice joke out of this one. This Nico guy here. Young girls having babies at 14, and again at 14 and 9.5 months. The comment there was that women were having child children much, much earlier, which is true. But then he starts going into random Wikipedia articles and saying, this would have been common knowledge, but it's been lost with the rise of bottle milking. Again, if you're a full-grown man talking about bottle milking, then you failed somewhere and your dad has failed you somewhere. So something to keep in mind as you move on. Anyways, back to the end card. Okay.